Philadelphia fighter was, a guy who would fight anybody, anywhere, anytime, and came to hurt somebody. I mean, Joe Frazier could punch, no doubt about it. He had a hell of a left hook. But I've never seen, in my time, a better left hooker than Cyclone Hart. Nobody wanted me fight me at that time. The mother guy, they duck me and everything, but I to fight all the tough fighters in Philadelphia. Never back up from none of them. You've chosen one on your gloves. Right. What do you mean by that? It all started with my dad. Uh, he chose me. It was forced on me at first. I was six years of age. My dad said he's going to be a fighter. He's not going to be nothing else. Why did he do that? I always ask myself why. I ask myself the same question. What has he saw in me that he didn't see in my other brother, Eugene Jr.? What he saw in me that he didn't see in him? I ask myself that daily, and I still can't come up with the correct answer. You wanted him to be a fighter? I believe that my son could be champ of the world. My dad was rated number three in the world. He was one of the greatest punches of all time. Ring Magazine got him in there as that. I think he wanted me to be the fighter to fix something in him because he didn't accomplish that ultimate goal. Which was? Becoming champion of the world. The father gets some satisfaction in the fact that maybe his son will become a world champion, which the father never did. But of course, it was tougher back then to get a world title fight. And he chose you to fix that. He always say, I don't want you to be like me, son. Get that out your head. I want you to be better. Explain why you were so hard on him. Well, I didn't want him to think, I ain't never wanted to think that it was a game. My dad hit me with a body shot when we sparred one time. 12 years old, put me down on the camera. Oh, man. I didn't like my dad so much. He was throwing punches, and I, I hit him with a left hook. He hit me in my solar plate. And right hand. Oh, oh, I just wanted to just hurt my dad at that time, just to let him feel how you make me feel. Why you get me up at 5 in the morning and run? Why you make me do this? Why you make me do that? I said, you can fool that. You fool people, but you can't fool that ring. I couldn't believe a father would do something like that to his son. But didn't you ever tell him, Dad, I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to run around the block when it's still dark and cold. I, I, I did. I told and him. what happened? I don't care about that. You're going to do what I say. You're in my house. You're under my roof. You're my boy. And you're going to do what I say do. It would be years before he understood his father's true purpose. Real toughness wasn't physical. And the real test was yet to come. Jesse was a rising amateur star by the time his older brother was murdered, shot to death, January 12th, 2010. I could take any physical man of pain you put me through. But the worst thing that ever happened to me, that it made me withstand and be stern on, is the loss of my brother. My brother Damon got killed. I never felt pain like that in my life. I remember my niece, his daughter, my dumb. She said, Jesse, just please, I just want my dad. Just tell me it's not real. Just tell me it's not real. She was crying her eyes out. And there's the pain of nothing you can do. Physically, mentally, nothing you can tell her to stop her from crying, to stop her from feeling this hurt. This happens. This happens. And you go to a dark place. Real bad place. And all of a sudden, you're planning your revenge. Absolutely. Absolutely, at that time. Um, I didn't care what I, like at that time. But you, then you, got, you took him, and then you got to come get me. You, you had, had a to gun? come get me, absolutely. What were you going to do with it? Well, they same thing they did to my brother. The same thing they did to him. I don't care nothing about y'all. I want y'all to feel that same pain my niece feel. So you walk around the streets with a gun, and you stop fighting. Yeah. Stop boxing. Absolutely. Who were you at that moment? I don't even know who I was. I didn't care about nobody in that, in, in that, at that time. I wanted his family to feel the same pain that my family felt. The best thing I uh, think to Jesse is let him, I sent him in the training camp. Me being from the street, I knew how, how I would feel or how I would think. 
He sent me up there without Mitchell. The Olympic coach. And my dad called him and said, look, I got a, I got a situation here. They were worried you were going to do something you couldn't Or somebody's going to do something to me. It, it, it goes both ways when you when you arm yourself. And gave him a chance to think out, be a man. I wanted to be a man then. And that's what made him a man, is getting him out. For Jesse, the best way to live was to leave. Still, his brother's voice stayed with him, even as he lost his spot on the 2012 Olympic team in a double tiebreaker by a single point. If the game made him tough, now it broke his heart. He thought he was done with boxing. I had a dream about my brother Damon. He came to me in my sleep and was like, uh, yo, you boy, you supposed to be like Shea Ray Robinson in one of them balls. You boy, you gonna be like Muhammad Ali in one of them balls. That's how he was talking in the dream. Don't let that back you down. Don't let that discourage you. You got a bigger goal. You're gonna be great. You gotta accept that. I had so much to, like, I wanted to ask him about him getting killed, and before I got that out, he was gone. Who needs that belt more, you or him? They ain't on me no more. I'm done. I done it. I done all the boxing and all the things. I did it. Now he, he got, he carried it for the family. There's a fighter from Philadelphia. Something to live for, something to die for. I always said I, I always want to uphold the Philadelphia fighter legacy. That means more to me than a world title.